All right, I was out and about visiting more customers, walking the docks. I love doing it. I love the, the forklift tire dust on everything, the smell of a warehouse, right? I got it in my blood. I, I noticed that this particular customer I was at was putting their little crush cones. So I know out there this is a box, but we're going to pretend for all intensive purposes this is those little triangular cones people like to put on top of their pallets. Look, I call them crush cones. Really, they put them on there so that when you get your freight stacked, if the cone gets crushed, they know that it got stacked and maybe check out the package a little more because they don't want their freight being stacked. But we know in LTL, you got to get your load factor. You got to get your stuff in your line haul trailers and they they stuff it in there and pack it in. Not air, all carriers are created equal, but they all do it. One of the things I don't think a lot of shippers are aware of with this little crush cone right here, right? So let's say you, you measure your pallet, you get your length, your width, your height, you put it in, right? Oh, okay. Based on density, this thing's class 70. Well, what you didn't include was the height that your little crush cone added. Because when your carrier picks up your freight and they dimensionalize this and you got that cone on top of your box, right? They're, they're including that in the height of the pallet. So now if you factor those dims in and it doesn't always happen, but let's say it moved it from class 70 to 92 and a half, right? Because the height increased, but the pounds per cubic feet did not because of your little crush cone, you are now paying more money for your little crush cone. So just understand how it works and how the carriers view that. But not a lot of shippers know that. So keep that in mind. I understand that there's a rhyme or a reason to why you are doing that, but 